in a listen only mode, but there will be times when the committee chair will allow the public to make comments on the agenda items currently being discussed. At that time, I will provide instructions on the screen for how you as the public can access the Q&A feature that we will be using. I will unmute the member of the public in the order that that request has been made, and each member of the public is allowed a two-minute comment period. We will be announcing about a 10-minute time warning, and at the end of the two minutes, we will simply mute the microphone. It's not necessary to identify yourself in order to make a public comment. However, please remember to be considerate with your remarks. Please note that the raised hand feature, which we will be members uh, is only to be used by the board members and that any raised hands from the public will not be recognized and go unanswered. This meeting is going to be recorded. I will turn that on now. And we are ready to begin the meeting. Fantastic. Thank you. So first of all, we will start with item number one or have a roll call. Uh, Dr. Chawla. Present. Perfect. And Dr. McIntyre. I think we just lost. Dr. I see that she just dropped off. Do we want to hold for a moment? I think so. Yeah. It looked like she was having some internet difficulty earlier. So let's see. I'll keep an eye on our attendee list when she comes back on. Well, why don't I go? I'll finish roll call on myself. Dr. Wong, I'm present. And we'll go on to item two, and hopefully she can log back on in the meantime. Because we still have quorum with Dr. Chala and myself. Okay. Fine. Okay. So now we will just go to item number two, which is public comment for items that are not on the agenda. Mr. Moderator, if you could open it up for public comment for item two. I have opened up the Q&A panel for you. So if you would like to uh, enter a public comment on this item, go ahead and click on the Q&A button at the bottom right of your screen. Type into the comment box, I would like to make a comment, and then send it to all panelists. And I will go ahead and pause and give you a moment to use this feature. At this moment, I do not see any comments in the comment box. Would you like me to close the comment box? Yes, please. There you go. Okay. Oh. So I guess then the next section is all of the course approvals. Dr. Chala, do you want to wait for Dr. McIntyre? Should we just give her a few minutes? Or do you want to go ahead? I mean, that's fine. I didn't I mean, I didn't have a lot of issues. Did you you want to point out maybe something? I was trying to look through them all, but so I, I had three that I had had issues with. So I didn't know if we there was I mean there was hold on there was one maybe we can wait for why don't you tell me which ones and that might help me find the ones I Okay. So I had I, I had an issue with uh item G as in George. The Bay Area retina, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the the and Bay that, Area retina one, right? Yeah, the Bay Area retina. Yeah. And uh and yeah. Uh, was item T as in Tom. Oh, and Dr. McIntyre just texted me. She said she is trying to get back on right now. So we'll, and then the last one I had was uh, item W. Mine were, um, Mine were actually with the, the T and the W, not the other one, but yes, that's fine. We can talk about, we can wait for her. Yeah. So how are things? Things are good. What about you? So how, how is the air where you are? Because it's actually gotten quite nice in the last two days. Like, I can't believe it. I was so excited to open a window the other day. Um, it's it's improving. It's still been murky, but slowly improving. And the fact that it's not, you know, 200 degrees is, is helpful. Oh. It was like, it was 120 degrees where I live. I, I don't even know what that means, you know? <laughs> it was 111 by where I, or where we were, where we are, and I couldn't, could not believe how bad it was. Here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold this up. Everyone can see. So this was at 11 a.m. last Wednesday. The air quality here was so unbelievably, it was like, it was the day of the apocalypse. 
that was that yeah. same birthday. And then it was it was that orange, and it was freaky weird because yeah. you went outside at eleven, and, and and it was still really really dark. It was crazy. I kept on thinking yeah. I was teaching a class in the middle of the night. Yeah, it it was it was just dark and overcast. My daughter kept asking, "Is it going to rain?" I'm like, "That's not rain." <laughs> and I walked outside. I'm like, "Why? Why is all this stuff?" On? And then I realized it was ash. Yeah. And I kept I don't, driving into work at the wrong time because it was so dark. Yeah. I'm not, it's, it, I'm not even near specifically any fires. It's amazing. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And so. Sure. Uh, how was, how was the, uh, the sky in Sacramento last week? Were you guys like weirdly dark? Yeah, I'm, I'm a respiratory high risk group too. So today is the first day I could actually open my window and enjoy some air here in Sacramento. So we had a, a significant change last night, this morning. Yeah, so we're now at about 22 in the air quality index. We've been at about 130 most of the last two weeks. Yeah, so it, it's good. I'm glad things are getting better. And I guess there is some rain up in the, the foothills or yeah. was last night. So hopefully all of that will bring some relief to folks. Yeah, it drizzled just a little bit yesterday when I was uh, driving in, so that was kind of nice and weird all at the same time. Air oh. quality was 200 here, over 200 actually on certain days. Oh yeah, ours ours has been that bad. Like two That's weeks, like, mine was at 500. Well, yeah, you're right near the fires. You're. It was so sad. I was like, don't even take the dog outside for a walk. Just. She just looks at you like, what is going on? You're like, sorry. <laughs> no, it's like a hazmat suit. Put her in a little hazmat suit and take her out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Deborah, where are you? Oh. Oh, so hey, Sarah, can you send Deborah a call in number? She says that she can't get online. So, um, but she wants a number to call in. She's just gonna do it via voice. I don't let's see if I have one. Most certainly, no problem at all. Uh, Lillian, for the um, agenda item five, mm -hmm. when you do this, do it separately because I'll abstain from those. Okay. I help organize those. All right. So, um, agenda item five A, five B. I didn't. I don't have anything to do with. So. Um, if it makes it easier, I can just abstain from all of them. But the ones that I specifically have some knowledge of are five, A one two three in terms of organizing. So oh, that's Ben can... trying to get in. Hold on. <laughs> let me let me get rid of Ben. So the, what I was saying, uh, Lillian, is that it's item 5A, 1, 2, and 3. Okay. So I will definitely abstain from those. Um, and then you're fine with five item 5B five as well. At, at Northern California, I never have anything to do with those. You know, okay. some Southern California, I don't either, but these ones, I helped kind of, uh, I recruited the speakers, let's put it that way, so. All right, so I will have... I will, Deborah and I will be the only ones that vote on items 5A. We still have quorum, so that should be fine. Thank you for letting me know, although I should probably start with because I'm gonna forget between right now and then.
I guess we'll give Deborah until 11.45. That's like another three more minutes. And then uh, otherwise we can just proceed. That would be great. I'm walking her through it, the uh, access codes now. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you, Shara. Do is Olivia in school now? Or she's still preschool? She's, she's gonna be yeah, she's preschool. She's still three. She's gonna be four in a week and a half, like a week from Sunday. And so she's not I don't have to deal with that just, just yet. And Ben's gonna be two the following week. So Wow. Nobody's nobody's in school. Everyone sitting in front of the computer eight to ten hours a day? They're trying to steal my computer, but other than that, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have like uh, five computers on Wi-Fi right now at my house, so there's always a possibility that something might drop. Yeah. And for some reason, I have the least choice uh, area to work in. Mm. Each have their own, and and I get, I get what's left over, and I get banned from a whole bunch of rooms because I'm too noisy. <laughs> now I keep getting, "Mommy, can I type on your computer?" I'm like, I'm actually. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to get a spare keyboard and they can type while you're typing they have their stuff but they like they still want mine you know they're at that age where they want yours i got them like little things to play so they could pretend while i'm working <laughs> don't want you know he wants hers and she wants mine and i can't make it like a you know fisher price keyboard so <laughs> Moderator, I believe that Dr. McIntyre has returned. Excellent. You're on it. Thank you. All right, Deborah, if you can just test your microphone for us, that would be great. I'm here. I have no idea what happened. I called <laughs> Welcome in to the world of technology. And this came back up again. So here I am. All right. I'm going to go ahead and put myself on mute and I'm going to go ahead and resume the recording. Just a moment. All right, we will go ahead and resume the meeting. Fantastic. So, Deborah, while you were gone, we just uh, opened it up for public comment for items not on the agenda for the next for future meetings, and we did not have any public comment. So, we're going to go on now to section three, which is discussion of possible action on continuing education course approval requests. So, for the items in section three, would you or Dr. Paula have any comments? Because these were, I'm sorry, item section, oh. item three is for resubmitted applications. No questions. So, and Dr. Shaw, do you have any comments, questions regarding uh, items in section three? Um, no, I don't. So can I have a motion then to pass items in section three, uh, section 3A, 3B, and 3C. So moved. Can I get a second? I'll second. Okay. Then we'll go ahead and vote. I'll second. Thank you, Dr. McIntyre. So, uh, Dr. Chala, how do you how do you move? How do I vote? You mean? Oh, that means how do you how do you vote? Sorry. I do I vote to, I vote to approve. Okay. Uh, Dr. McIntyre. Aye. And Dr. Wong, aye. Items in section 3, 3, A, B, and C have been approved. And now moving on to section 4. Dr. McIntyre, do you have any, any comments or questions about items in section 4? 
four A through four and W. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? Ooh. Are these are these the newly submitted items or the Kaiser items? Sorry, these are the newly submitted items. Kaiser items are in section five. So all newly submitted completed packages okay. are in uh, section four. Okay, yeah, a couple of items um, on 4P4. The doctor had a public letter of reprimand I don't see that as a, a barrier to approving the, the course. I just, I, all of the materials were sufficient. Um, I didn't have a problem with that. Uh, I just wanted to bring that to our attention. And then on 4P6, um, the presentation materials in my packet were blank, but the outline was present. And I would approve that based on the out outline and all of the other items being um, fully present and submitted. Right. Um, I think the uh, final in, item was for T. Well, okay. Uh -huh. T is Tom. Yes. Okay. For T. I, I, I had a little bit of a problem with that because it was more like a sales pitch for educational program. Uh, if anyone read through this, you'll see that the um, presenter was John Maggiano, MD, and he was actually the developer of the item they're discussing. Uh, if you look at the presentation materials, that had an entirely different name on it. The presentation materials were put together by someone named Andrew Talley, who happens to be a CPA with Talley Capital Group. So this was more like a presentation to try to get investors than an actual medical presentation. So I don't know how you all feel about that, but I was not comfortable approving that specifically as a, a, a one hour educational item, but it was just one hour. It's not like they were asking for three and it was a presentation of possible new technology. So maybe we can discuss that. Okay. So um, I also had an issue with that one. So again, this is four T is in Tom, Dr. Chaw. Yeah, sure. And um, I had an issue because they applied for one hour of glaucoma CE, and this doesn't have anything to do with glaucoma. It only really has to do with the device that they were talking about, this handheld tenometer. So uh, it could be one hour sort of miscellaneous CE because it, it is talking about the benefits and how to use, use this instrument, which is just another handheld device. But I, I have, I took issue with the fact that it is one hour of glaucoma CE because it just doesn't educate um, about glaucoma. Yeah, that was, um, that was my concern as well as what it was. Because yeah, I mean, it's true to Deborah's point that it, you know, you could, you could perceive it that way. But my bigger problem was that they were asking for glaucoma. So, I mean, the only thing they talked about was the device. And so it, it's, a, it's a new handheld tenometer. It, it sounds nice. Um, so yeah, I mean, because I, I, I think, think it's, it's okay. Have, yeah, not yet. I think it's okay to have, you know, people take CE. So again, so long as it's not for a five hour credit or something for understanding new technologies. A lot of times people incorporate that into glaucoma lectures, but in this case, it's by itself. Um, but so as a standalone, I don't know that I would give it glaucoma credit. Yeah. So I don't know if um if we want to maybe have staff go back and talk to them and they could have one hour of CE. It just can't be one hour of glaucoma CE. What do you think about you, that, Deborah? I'm sorry, okay for, for T. Deborah? Deborah, are you okay with giving them a CE, like one hour of miscellaneous CE for this, or are you against that also? Is she there? I see her on the screen, but she's now, you know, oh, there she is. Hey, Deborah, can you hear us?
She's not on my screen. Are she still there on yours? She's not right now. She's frozen. And now she's spinning. <laughs> Speaking of frozen, that's my daughter's favorite show these days. Is it? Have you watched the new Mulan guys? Not yet. Like, waiting for a night when cousins are available too. <laughs> My teenagers gave me like one night when you were willing to um, watch a movie with me. Nowadays, I have to bet them like, hey, do we want to have family movie night? And they're like, mom, we did that two nights ago already. Yes, my kids still want to spend time with me, but I know it'll change. <laughs> It becomes Hello. Bad. Yeah. I see that Deborah has dropped off again. Yes. So, so um, do you want me to go ahead and pause the recording here and then uh, we'll wait for her to re log in? Yes, please. Okay. And I am, te I am texting her to try and uh, help her out with her tech issues. So, can she just call? Did she just call in last time? And because I, then I saw her pop up on the screen. A little confused. So I think she attempted to dial in and then found that the internet connection was working. So I'm going to walk her through just dialing in uh, so that we don't have that. I mean, she could still do internet if she wants, but I think she should just and then mute herself on on the internet connection so that we can at least have voice from her, a reliable voice. Would be nice. I totally forgot we were being recorded. <laughs> Do we know what's missing in these incomplete applications? Do we have any idea? Or is that a question for Shara? I think Shara or Mark. I don't know what's missing. Oh, well, you know, it's on the. Uh, the cover page, yes, the cover page of each individual. Uh, what was which items have been submitted and which items have not. Yeah, so there's some of them, like one of them is missing um, PowerPoints or summaries. Why can't I see that? Hold on. Let me see. So, um, so if you go to the incomplete. Yeah, hold on. I'm trying to get into, I can't, um, you know, the packet that Mark sends. Mm -hmm. So if can't. this is uh, the very, so yeah, so it's under, hold on. No, not that one. Dr. Chala, I'm not sure if you're able to access the box, but then they are separated out. You don't have to try to run through the entire um, PDF document. So on 6B1, sorry to go in the opposite order, there are um, CVs missing for each instructor. Yeah, and, and the... Um... Okay. In the in item A, there's CVs missing. Item A is actually the PowerPoint or presentation materials, but it looks like there might be a detailed course outline. So let's go ahead and take a look at that really quickly and see if that is. That's what I was trying to see. I'm like, is there something that we can rectify to like get these through? Um, and then what's missing in in B? B was just as a us. A, 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 course summary. 
but we have the PowerPoint. We have the PowerPoint, right? Yes, we have the PowerPoint. Can we just not, do we need to have? This is what I mean, like we get, we get, I get complaints from people who are presenting stuff saying that we gave you all of this and you denied it for like you made us submit something that didn't was you know kind of repetitive so that's what i was trying to avoid so if that's possible for either or both of these we should if there's if we have enough data to information to make you know a so good should, could we could we tentatively tentatively approve it as a committee and then ask and then do, do we have to have all the material or can we Tentatively approve it, wait, and then wait for staff to obtain the last, the missing section. Because yeah, I mean, if there's a say yes, it's an acceptable CE, then that's the job, right, for us to do. Um, and I'm just, I'm wondering, that's why I asked what was missing, because I couldn't find it in the list. It's like it's a lot of material, so I, maybe I missed it. But if it's something that's just repetitive, you know, because, for example, if it's a course summary, and it's the presentation is summarized and in a PowerPoint, do we need the summary and the, you know, that's something like that. I mean, if there's something specific that they didn't do, like they didn't pay for it or whatever, then that's different. But. Um, the materials I have here, um, the lecture summary is about a paragraph long, and then there is a bulleted list of about 10 um, bullets within the outline for the course. So I'm not sure if that is sufficient for you to determine the that's course's correct. content. Yeah. And that's in 6B, or I'm sorry, 6A. Okay. Um, let me take a look. So Maybe it's, and what's missing for 6B? 6B is we're missing the CDs, but we have the whole talk, which is, it, it's a good talk. So we could we tentatively approve it for content, and then they would just have to send in CVs before staff could officially. Yeah, because it's like I mean the CVs you can find. I see that Deborah has locked back in again. If we want to test her microphone, Deborah, can you test your microphone? Sarah, you can find CVs on. Who are the people? Uh, the people are. Is that the melt? That's that the melt I'm that's here. Melton talk. I'm here. The melt the Thomas and Melton. Uh, that CV is available online. We can get that now if we want to. So we have Deborah back online. So uh, do you want me to go ahead and resume the recording? Yes, please. All right. We are back recording. Okay. Um, so. Uh, okay. Oh. oh. So do, to answer your question, we currently have access to the PowerPoints for item six, B as in boy. So we can see the content of the CE. Um, yeah, no, I, I, for item 6A, we, we don't have, we only have a... If, if we don't have the, the content for 6A, then we can't. Because if you're missing a CV and it's Melton and Thomas, they're available online. Like, Right, so uh, for item 6A... connection uh, again? No, we hear, we hear you. I think. Broadcast is... Deborah, can you hear us? Yeah, she's gone again. So for for item six A, it's a um, it's a it's a six bullet pointed outline. So it's a short outline, but it's uh, you know they're asking for it's a one hour course. And it's on ultra wide field imaging in pachychoroid disease and central serous coriol retinopathy. Yeah. And 
I mean, based on their outline, it sounds fine. We just don't have the PowerPoint. Okay. And so it, it is the committee's discretion. If you believe that the information provided is enough for you to understand what will be done within an hour and that substantiates an hour of credit, then we can certainly go ahead. It's not a tentative approval. You can approve today. Um, I would be reluctant to, um, uh, as a matter of course, move uh, applications that are submitted without CVs if we're not able to find them online, um, simply because we want to make sure that your expertise is used to evaluate that person's uh, 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 ex you know, their expertise, essentially, right? So it may be seen that you know there is a, a, a listed article that might have been published, but you, of course, will know better if that is a peer-reviewed uh, journal or if, in fact, this is you know not enough uh, verified expertise to give this presentation. But if you're willing to take a look at the the CVs that are online um, and determine that that you believe the people who are slated to give the content, are qualified to give the content, then you have certainly, of course, could approve the course today. The reason I mentioned it is because the that one is a, a Ron Melton and Randall Thomas, and they're like probably the top educators in optometry these days, or one of the top. So I'm sending you guys, you can take a look. I'm sending one to Dr. Wong, to Shara, and to Dr. McIntyre. This is Ron Melton's CV, and I'm gonna send Randall Thomas's in just a second. Because I know those are like sometimes you see them and they're like these national speakers, um, and it's kind of a formality for some reason. I don't know why they didn't put a CV in. Um, it's just because it's like a back and forth, you know. And I just just trying to move it along. Let me find Randall Thomas. This is the moderator. Okay. Deborah has dropped off again. Do we want to go ahead and pause the recording or continue to hold this, uh, have this conversation on the recording? Um, to pause the recording. Yes. And I, I see she's attempting to log back in. So as soon as she's in and ready, I'll go ahead and promote her back up to a panelist again. Just a moment. And Shara, there's no way she can just call in using telephone without logging in. The issue is that all of her services are provided by satellite and the satellite is inconsistent. So phones are inconsistent as well. Gotcha. Deborah, this is the moderator. I've bumped you up to a panelist. Go ahead and test your microphone again. I'm here, but we don't know for how long. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I have the recording back on if you want to continue forward. Yes, please. Thank you. All right, so we're going to go back to items four while we have Deborah here with us. Um, there, I had two others. So I think for T, Deborah, uh, Dr. Tall and I were saying that we were okay with providing one hour of um, a general optometry CE since it is talking about a new uh, handheld tonometer, but we both had issues because it was asking for one hour of glaucoma CE. I'm okay with miscellaneous CE. Perfect. All right. So um, one of the other ones that I also, so, and then Dr. Chala, do you have any option or any, um, uh, any issues with item is P, P as in Paul four that Dr. McIntyre talked about. This is the one that there was a letter of reprimand for one of the doctors. I mean, if it's a qualified, if the person's qualified to give the lecture and the contents okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't have any issues with that. I noticed a letter of recommend also, but it was a it was a good talk. And then the only other item that Deborah had an issue with was item P is in Paul number six. She said that I, I actually I saw the the PowerPoints, so I'm not sure if it was just a glitch when she logged in. But P Paul six, I I I thought that was fine, and that was a day in the life of an. L L U E I optometrist. So, did you have any issues with with um, seeing the P six, Doctor Chala? No, I was okay with. It. Okay, it was just the one we talked about the, the same ones that you have issue with in um, uh, the SCCO group. They're, they're the same ones that I have I had the issue with. Yeah, so the other issue, Dr. McIntyre, that I had issues, the other one that I had issues with is W as in William. 
So they asked for two hours of ocular disease CE, but they only really talked about the optos and, and how the optos worked and the mechanics and the field of view. So again, I'm fine with them receiving two hours of miscellaneous, but not comfortable with two hours of ocular disease when they're only talking about the instrument and not, I mean, they mentioned, oh, you can take a picture of diabetic retinopathy, but they didn't talk about any of the disease. So I took issue with the categorization of the CE that they were, that they were, were requesting. I agree. Okay. Yeah. So if they miscellaneous for that, um, yeah. it's and then I'm going to go back to the an earlier letter, G as in George. Again, they requested uh, ocular disease CE, and this is the one that's on artificial artificial intelligence and diabetic retinopathy. But it was really more of a discussion on AS and not a discussion on diabetic retinopathy. So these these uh, CE talks that are talking about it improved technology have a tendency to focus, at least this one, has a tendency to focus only on the technology and not on the disease. So again, for me, item G is in George one. So I'm sorry, G one talked only about technology, so I'm okay with them having miscellaneous, but not ocular disease uh, CE credit. So, I mean, I agree with you, but I have a question. So if we go we approve these, mm -hmm. Char, how do we do that? Do we say we approve them for this category and not ocular disease, or do we not approve them, take it back to the, you know, um, to the right. present? I think we, I think what you can do is to separate these out. So go ahead and you can make a motion to approve items four without G1, without T, and without item W for approval as submitted. And then you could do a second motion for those that are going to be amended for approval of miscellaneous credit. Okay. Yeah. Because I just, again, for the interest of just letting them know it was approved, but not for this category. And if they want to you know, resubmit, then they can do it. If not, they can just accept the approval. Um, just following the same sentiment I had for the ones that are incomplete, it, just try to get get them done rather than delaying them because then it goes on for months, you know. Okay, so while we still have Deborah with us, I'm going to go ahead and ask for a motion to approve items <laughs> section four with the exception of G is in George. I'm sorry, G is in George one. <clears throat> Item T is in Tom and item W. Can I get a motion? So moved. Can I get a second? I'll second. Oh, I'll fantastic. Second. Okay, so now we're gonna vote. Dr. Chala. Aye. Dr. McIntyre. Aye. Dr. Wong, aye. So motion passes. And then I would like to have a second motion to Approve item G. Dr. Wong, I'm so sorry. Could we maybe do the um, 5A Kaiser? Because it is complete. We do the abstention, so definitely need Dr. McIntyre. Okay, yes. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to go on to section 5A, 1, 2, and 3. Can I get a motion to approve items 5A, 1, 2, and 3? I'll, I'll mo move to approve those items. Okay, and I'm going to second it. Dr. Chala is abstaining from this vote. And Dr. McIntyre, how do you vote for items 5A, 1, 2, and 3? Aye. And I vote, Dr. Wong votes aye, so the motion passes. And can I get a motion to pass items 5, B as in boy, number 1 and 2? So B1 and B2. So moved. Oh. Can I get a second? I move to approve. And let's go ahead and vote. Dr. Chala? Aye. Dr. McIntyre? Aye. Dr. Wong? Aye. Motion passes. You want to go back to the four so we don't forget? Yes, please. All right. So now we're, I need a motion to pass items 4G1, T as in Tom, W as in William, as miscellaneous CE and sorry. not the, I'm sorry. I was, I was gonna, I thought you were done. I was gonna, I was gonna move. <laughs> okay. So, um, 
Uh, Dr. Kamala has, uh, I, I, I need a second on the motion. I'll second that. Okay, let's go ahead and vote. Dr. Chala. Aye. Dr. McIntyre. Aye. And Dr. Wong, aye. Motion passes. All right, so the last one we were talking about, Deborah, while, while you were uh, trying to connect with us, is items in uh, item six. They're incomplete applications. But looking at what's missing, okay. So for item A, there is currently an outline. There's just no PowerPoint. It, they're asking for one hour of CE and it's on ultra field imaging for pachychoroid disease and central serous choroid retinopathy. So the outline looks sufficient, but we don't have the, the PowerPoint. And then item B as in boy is on current trends in medical management. And that one is by, um, Melton and Thomas, and then that one is missing CVs. So Dr. Chal and I were talking about how perhaps we could tentatively approve it until we, do we want to ask for the materials, Shara, or? Well, the CVs I sent Shara for like the second one. I can't yeah. help because I don't have the PowerPoint, you know, for um, the first, the first one. one. But the CVs I just sent to Shara and to both of you, it's, it's Melton and Thomas. So those are, um, like, you know, nationally known speakers. So if you are willing to accept those CVs. Then we could um, just these. Yeah, I, I don't know the first one, if uh, you know, about the, if you feel that the PowerPoint is necessary. If you do, then we have to wait. But what do you think, Deborah? My only concern with the PowerPoint was that the, the nature of the presentation actually requires some kind of um, photography so we can see what's being referred to. Now, I'm sure they have it because they wouldn't do that presentation without those photographs in the presentation. So I, I would prefer to see it. I mean, we can wait on to doctors. Yeah, yeah, with doctors Melton and Thomas, we all in our industry, we know who that is. If you mm -hmm. can get a copy of their CV off of anything else, absolutely approve them. So I don't have a problem with that. Just the presentation I, materials for 6A. Yeah, I sent you guys these. Um, yeah. so, okay. So do we wanna make a motion to pass item 6B as in boy, current trends in medical management by um, Melton and Thomas, now that we have their CVs? Mm -hmm. All right, can I get a I'll motion? To approve. Can I get I'll a second? Second. Perfect, all right. We'll do a, uh, a vote, Dr. Chala. All right. Dr. McIntyre? Aye. And Dr. Wong, aye. So as of right now, we have item 6A that still needs material and all other items have been approved. Oh, so, wait a sorry. Minute. That's a, a valid point about wanting to see it. So that, that's mm -hmm. fine. So now we're gonna move on to um, item number seven, discussion and possible action on meeting minutes. Do um, either of you- Madam Chair. I'm so sorry. I've got a lot of disturbance here. Um, wanted to, you know, we do not unfortunately have 7A. There are not minutes available for the June 26th meeting. Staff was not able to meet the deadline on those. So in front of you for consideration, you have only the July 31st meeting minutes. I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so should I get a motion to pass um, item 7B or for, to, pass the, to pass the minutes from the July 31st meeting? So moved. And can I get a second? I a second. All right. So Dr. Chala to vote. I'm sorry, Dr. Chala. Aye. Dr. McIntyre. Aye. Dr. Wong. Aye. Motion passes. No one has it now. Okay. Um, do we want to uh, go on to item H, which is discussion and possible action on the 2021 up uh, strategic plan for optometry. Sure. And Madam Chair members, as we noted in both DOC and LRC, um, this is simply an opportunity the president would like to afford each of the committees in order to think about the strategic objectives that might fit into the responsibilities of their committee to further refine them 
or to uh, suggest additions, uh, but it, it is not necessary that uh, action be taken if the committee feels that the um, items presented are encompassing of what the committee feels will need to be addressed in the, the next three to five years. Uh, Dr. Chawla or Dr. McIntyre, do you have comments on the strategic plan? I had no comments. Dr. Chawla, do you have any comments? Sorry, Dr. Chawla, you're muted. I don't know if you're talking or not. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, just, um, I, w I was talking to myself, apparently. Um, <laughs> I, I was trying to pull up my notes, but I don't think I had any issues. Um, I think I was okay with it. Okay. So I think EEC at this point does not have any comments regarding the 2021 strategic plan. We're going to move on to item nine, which is adjournment. So uh, thank you everybody for coming and Deborah for logging in multiple, multiple times so that we could get all the courses. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna head, head into town for the next one. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you all so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Thank you. See you soon. <laughs>